Should you eat before you work out or should you work out fasted? What about after your workout? Should you eat something right away or is it okay to wait? Now, I know what the data says, but here's what I'm going to tell you. It doesn't matter. We're splitting hairs here. In fact, here's what you should listen to. Your body. What makes you feel the best? Eating and then working out or working out fasted? What about after your workout? You feel best if you wait a little bit? Then do that. Sometimes we get so inundated with data and we listen to it and we follow it and we go against what makes us feel best. And this actually takes away from our progress. So at the end of the day, listen to your body. Should I brush my teeth? Should I put my clothes on first? What do you think? That's totally different. <laughs> yes, yes you should brush your teeth. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. It's the same and thing that matters. <clears throat> yeah. When yeah. though, maybe. Maybe that's argue. Yeah. You could argue that. You know, we actually, uh, remember early on, we used to discuss, we hadn't discussed this actually in a really long time. It yeah. feels like, um, because we're all different if I remember. I know you oh, like- Our opinions are different on how we feel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Our opinions are are the same of uh, it doesn't matter. It's you're, you're splitting hairs. I mean, and God, this was so- in the, the bodybuilding space, this is like really yeah. like over the top, you know what I'm saying? Where guys are carrying meals in their, in their bags and taking breaks and eating in the, in the middle of their workout or eating in the locker yeah. room and stuff like that to time yeah. the anabolic well, window. Each one of those windows, like otherwise, yeah, who knows? Well, you, might fall when, off. when you're doing rocket science and you're, you're trying to get a rocket uh, to space, then the kind of paint you use and every gram you add on the <laughs> rocket makes a difference. But this isn't rocket science. Like again, if you're a bodybuilder, and you're competing at the highest levels, and you've done everything else, then you start to look at these ridiculous small yeah, things. Yeah, real granular. But the average <clears throat> for the average person, this literally doesn't make doesn't, doesn't make a difference at all. It makes no difference. I mean, the, the me, difference is which one makes you feel the best. That's what matters. Yeah. The the purpose of me actually bringing the competitors up, and you're you're right. Like, uh, you know, it's like in analogy, another analogy is like you know, race car race cars with spoilers and little things like yeah. that. Like that makes a difference. Throwing that on your Honda Civic makes no sense. Yeah, before right? you make the engine bigger. Right, right. So <clears throat> but even then and the reason why I brought them up is that I never gave a shit about that and I did just fine. Yeah. Competing. Yep. So even at the highest level uh, of all the things, because in even you know, like yeah, I looked at that stuff or I paid attention to it. But there was always something else going on, whether that be optimizing my sleep more, maximizing or, your volume, right, or or, <clears throat> or you know, having a better lifting session, or doing something to yeah. re recover better. Like those things move the needle so much more than like trying to time the anabolic window. That it was like I, I've always got somewhere else to improve more. So even though I aware of it, I could you could justify it for a high level bodybuilder. Even then. It's like splitting hairs. No, and, and the reason why I'm, I'm I'm bringing this up is I just read this study. They were following <clears throat> these like uh, fitness trackers on obese individuals, and the the article said, uh, you know, what's the best time for activity in terms of you know your progress? And they said, well, according to the data, you're better off doing a lot of your activity in the evening versus the morning. And I just you know I shake my head because. Okay, great study, whatever. Uh, first of all, the difference was minimal. Second, it, it was observational, meaning. We don't know what other behaviors that people engage in who do it in the evening versus the morning that could also contribute to that. And then third, the average person looking at that who's getting started may think that's important. They may think to themselves, oh, this is a, this is something I need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't like to work out at night and it works better for me to work out in the morning, I'm going to do it this way because this study said that that's a better way to do that. That's the wrong way to look at things. Um, it's like when a client would ask us, what's the best form of cardio? My, the, the, the answer was always the cardio you like to do the most, because it doesn't matter if this machine burns 15% more calories than this other one. You do the one you like is the one you're going to do. It, yeah. It's interesting mm -hmm. to think about. I was just like, had this thought that, uh, with the emergence of podcasts and like more in-depth information, like, you know, besides what we're trying to do in terms of like. Uh, making it more relatable and just focusing on the main things. Like, I feel like there's a lot of podcasts though that get into the minutia yeah, sure. and like really highlight like this biohack and then, you, you know, do this first thing in the morning. Yeah. And it's like, they make it sound so crucial that like everybody has to be doing these like ridiculously nuanced things. You know who does that? Huberman does that yeah, a lot. Well, <clears throat> a lot know. of, I mean, we, when we first entered the space, that was, we weren't, our, we weren't the first fitness podcast. There was other fitness, but when we listened to all of them, we're like this is not the conversation I have with my clients. No, no. and that's what I think yeah. that went through all of our head from uh, just from a business perspective. Is like, okay, all these people are ultimately trying to build a business. That's why they're using these podcasts, whether it's to support their current one and grow it or to actually start a business. 
And if we're in the business of helping the general population, which most all trainers are, then what are you doing having those conversations? And like, that's not serving the, the, the masses of the community. You're, and you're speaking to the least likely customer which is the person who is already neurotic, reading, already maybe a coach or a trainer. They're not buying programs. They're not buying anything from you that's related to fitness. And you're to not fitness. helping them anyway. And you're not, and, well, They're and looking he, for the new shiny, like nuanced yeah, thing to you, focus you on too. They so. need to hear, do less, relax, calm yeah. down. Like that's what that person needs yeah, to hear, yeah. you know, type of deal. Yeah. You know, it, by the way, I, I, I understand because I was at one point, I was this kid looking for the secret answer i was this kid trying to build right, muscle right. and i remember i've brought this up so many times uh is, joe is his name i hope he listens to this podcast he's not, he's got to be in his 60s now he was a family friend and he was this chiropractor but he was a bodybuilder he was jack he was buff this guy i knew in person and i remember every time he'd come over my cousin and i were super into working out so every time he'd come over be like oh joe's here and we'd always kind of follow him around and we'd try to ask him questions about workouts and he took me aside one day i said i said joe he's like he saw that i was working out i think i was at this point i was 16 I'd been working out consistently for two years. So he could tell like I was really, I really into it. And uh, he takes me aside. He goes, all right, this is what you got to do. He goes, if you want to get big, this is what you got to do. He goes, train your whole body three days a week. And he goes, and I want you to eat a lot of chicken, a lot of eggs, uh, drink milk, eat a lot of tuna fish, try to eat a lot, like four times a day. And then he goes and get good sleep. And he goes, and you'll, you'll totally grow. And I swear to God, when he left, I remember thinking, literally thought to myself, <laughs> I told my cousin this. want to tell you the answer. I'm like, he's so full of shit. I looked at my cousin and said, I bet my dad told him to tell him that. Like, he don't want to tell me. <laughs> my dad told him Like, that. the real, like, he was telling me the real stuff. Uh, yeah. So I get it because the average person, they'll read an article that says, you know, wait 45 minutes after you wake up to drink your coffee because blah, 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 blah. Or do this new, you know, special whatever hack. And this is, gonna, and they're like, that's the one thing that I haven't tried yet. That's got to be the secret. Now, here's what we tell the coaches and trainers, because the coaches and trainers out there who are trying to make a difference, they know the truth. They know that that stuff doesn't move the needle. And this is what we tell them. You got to tell them the truth, but you got to sell it better than the other guys are selling the other crap. So literally our podcast, the reason why it became the top podcast wasn't because we were selling, you know, talking about the newest, craziest biohacks. It's 99% bullshit. It was because we told people what to do with the truth. We just had to sell it better. We just know how to communicate it better. So now the average person goes, you know, I've heard that before, but the way those guys say it, now it makes sense. I think I want to I want to try it out. You know, part of the problem is too, though, um, and, I, and I'm so glad that we started it the way we did. You know, originally when we first started the show, there was this, um, you know, we, we knew we had programs, right? And that would be the way we would monetize. And traditionally, most people monetize podcasts through ad revenue. And when you first get started and you're just starting to grow and scale, Ad revenue looks like affiliations, not actual true sponsorship, like right. a, like a, just an ad or a commercial. And what that ends up doing is it ties the the podcaster to the the outcome of like how many sales it makes. And so what that ends up doing subconsciously or actively they do it is that it you steer your content around selling it because it's the only way your podcast is generating revenue is that oh if we sell X amount of units I make a percentage of that. And we never did that, and that was like something that we were really adamant about when we first started. This we we have we have many sponsors that sell supplements, and you'll hear us often say that supplements will maybe give you one percent of, of what you're looking for. Now, the reason why our sponsors haven't left <laughs> is because people still go over to them because they trust us because we're honest. So I'm hoping that we're proving that model. I'm hoping that other fitness companies listen to this and go, we don't have to lie, we don't have to bullshit. I think if we're honest, we'll still be able to sell products, but we don't have to lie about it. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the hope. Today's giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's sale, brand new sale this month, Maps Strong, Maps Powerlift, great programs, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. You know, speaking of supplements, here's your transition to our commercial since we went this direction. And I, I don't know if you saw me doing, I had the IG story today. And I was just- doing, I heard you saying. I, I just had an IG story. You want to do all your supplements as gummies? Yes. And <laughs> so I know there's a lot of hate out there, right? Like there's a ton of hate of like, this is ridiculous gummies that you're added sugar and blah, blah, blah. It's minimal. But, it's so minimal. But here's the thing though. Like- I've never seen you so consistent with supplements I, in my life. I take them. 
So I'm on a mission to find every supplement I'm supposed listen, to take Adam, in gummy form. Listen, the only reason why... <laughs> so it's like having a bag of gummies every day this for is, me. The, this, Once they can turn them into cheese, dude, the, I'm, I'm, I'm like, pretty good right this, now. Hey, this is the truth. This is 100% truth. That Adam is a massive pain. Both Adam and Justin are pains in the ass when it comes to taking supplements. Yeah, they just don't. It, it is. The only reason why they're consistent with supplements is because they're partnered with a, a borderline... Well, I don't want to say borderline. I'm a fanatic. So I give them shit every day. Every day I'll show up and be like... Here's your supplements. Here's your supplements. Yeah. Otherwise, they won't take it. Yeah. I've never seen Adam or Justin be as consistent with supplements since Organifi it's had. Funny. I feel like <laughs> a little kid sometimes. <laughs> like, I don't want to take You know what? Uh, F it. I don't care, dude. I, I swear. It's like it's got me to be more consistent. By the way, what? so they, they dropped these, right? I can talk about the yeah, happy, yeah, okay, so, happy drops. So Organifi has a new product. Dude, called, how good are those, Okay. Man? So these yeah. are called happy drops. Yeah. Tell me what's in them. What am I having? Okay, so <laughs> since I've been taking them consistently, so there's their mood lifting supplement. Yeah. Now, when I first saw this, it, by the way, Drew's team is they're they're really good. They're really good because they're ahead of the curve, and mm -hmm. I see other companies copy them. Guaranteed, I guarantee you. Yeah, they do that. Look what Sheila G. Yeah, yeah. I don't they're, even know what Sheila G. Was of the curve. until they're gonna they're they gonna, introduced people it. Are gonna, I know you knew, but I didn't know what it people was. People are gonna follow them. Yeah. So Happy Drops are it literally is a mood lifting supplement. So I saw this and I'm like, all right, what did they put in there? Like. T yeah. Tons of caffeine. That's the only thing I think about. <laughs> no, they didn't. Here's what they put. I'll read all the ingredients, but I'll tell you the one that's exciting. So uh, they have passion flower. Passion flower is a, a natural enzyolytic, so it kind of reduces anxiety. Uh, go go to cola. Uh, that's a little bit of a uh, like s mild stimulant. Okay, so it's not like caffeine, but it's a mild ginger, stimulant. Ginger saffron. Ginger saffron. Uh, there's a, there's in fact there's a, a, a type of saffron called uh, saffractive. So this is a brand name of an extract of saffron. I was not familiar with saffron in, in supplement form. So I got this and I started reading about it. It's got a ton of data supporting it as an antidepressant. It raises, and it's been shown really? in study. Yes. It's been shown in studies to work kind of like an SSRI, raising what? serotonin and do dopamine in the brain. Now it's natural. Naturally. Uh -huh. It's natural. You know what else it has a lot of data supporting? So we were on the phone with Drew the other day. We talked to him sometimes. He's the founder of Organifi. I love the guys. He's hilarious. And he goes, hey, what do you guys think of the happy drops? And we're like, oh, they're great. And he goes, we're getting a bunch of DMs from like women who are saying it's like making them horny. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes. That's right. He I'm said like, that. what? <laughs> horny? Yeah, I just bought a, a bunch of boxes. <laughs> <laughs> just personally. Just yeah. as like hey, this at home. A serving <laughs> is two, by the way. Don't just, yeah. Anyway. Oh, I thought it was 10. I looked, up, <laughs> Whoopsies. I looked it up. It's It's been shown to be a libido enhancer. In particular, really? yes, in particular in women. Now, do you think that's connected uh, or just a correlation to that you feel better, therefore you're it's, more it's likely the dopamine. in the... Oh, it's that. Yeah, hmm. you raise dopamine and serotonin to an extent, but dopamine in particular, uh, it, dopamine tends to make people, you know, want to... Have sex. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so I looked it up and it, there it is. That's, that's, that's it. So now watch. Mark my now, words. He, you're gonna have a lot. Of, you're gonna have a lot of companies now come out. That's a cool, so, unintended. So uh, did side effect. did Drew say when they formulated like that was part of the intent, or is no, that just the what main, you're finding out as a, as no, a no? The main effect is mood lifting. Yeah, but saffron's also it's also been shown to be like potent antioxidant. Well, I mean, how many times when the mood. wife says she's not in the mood, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the mood tonight. I think the test is how many times you see the sweatpants come on. You know, yeah. like, check. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not tonight. Yeah. Just put them in the bag of gummy yeah. bears. <laughs> yeah. This is a different gummy bear. <laughs> Eat it. You know, Just take happens. your vitamins. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love the fact that you can't you can get it. I mean, I've got my vitamin D like that now. I'm taking the Shilajit like that. I got the Happy Drops like that. I mean, you know, they're, they're not the only one. That that market has exploded. I think that they've 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 locked in. One of the by the way, I don't know if you guys know this. The data on uh, how how often people don't take their pharmaceuticals, their prescribed medications. You know, that's a big problem. Yes. You guys know that? Yes. It's a huge, did you know that people- Do I know? It's a challenge for me, admittedly. Like yeah. I know that I have, I've gone and we have the, you know, our friends like Cabral, who uh, we have access to pretty much for free that charge thousands of dollars to get these tests back and told, take this, take this. Here's what you need to do. I still struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like just, that's well, crazy. So did you know that the data shows that people are more consistent with giving their pets their pharmaceutical than like, prescriptions and themselves? Yeah. So what they found is, like you said, a gummy means, you know, that now they have to put it in different form. But people are just more consistent because they like, <laughs> they like, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's crazy to me, Sal, that, that like that we're, just kind of getting, I mean, we've had it for kids for a very long time. 
why is it just take, why is it taking that long? Nobody thought. And we've about known it. that we've known that data. Nobody thought about so that. Just like adults will, will take care. N- of nobody it. thought about it until ki- parents, p- adults started buying kids supplements for themselves, and then they started figuring it out. Then the market went, oh wait a yeah. minute, why are adults buying this from the? And they're we're, they're crushing sales with these kids multivitamins that are gummies yeah like oh people like gummies i mean it's it's a combination Duh. of it Duh. it tastes good it's easy it's convenient you don't need to wash it down with yeah, a fluid yeah, yeah. so it could like you carry it in your bag anywhere and yeah. you can just take it chew it chew it up i quick. wonder too if uh, this is not a huge side effect but some people this happens to my wife if she takes um supplements pills on an empty stomach she gets nauseous so she has to take. It's mm, only for like a multivitamin for me. You're like that with a multivitamin. Yes. So multi- she's like I'll that. Get an, with I'll get other nauseous if I, oh, yeah, I, if I don't eat anything. So I'm wondering if you, when you eat it nope. in gummy form, get me. because it's got, oh. it's got gelatin and maybe a tiny bit of sugar. I don't know. I haven't tried a multivitamin yeah. gummy, but I would assume that that there's something I in wonder. the multivitamin that causes that kind of nausea when you when you have an empty stomach. That's yeah. super common. Yeah, yeah, super yeah, common. It's only that supplement. I could take. By the way, doesn't happen to me. I could take 85 pills of everything at the same time. Total empty. That's a different thing. I feel totally. That's fine. Who, so, Doug. Are you like that? Can you take a multivitamin on empty stomach? No, I cannot. Yeah, that's I. You know, it took me a long time actually to to piece that together. Like I remember when I first first started as a trainer because no one had said that to me, and I'd have just these re- random days where I'd be nauseous. I'm like, why am I just nauseous like that? And I was like, oh, it's every time I have a multivitamin on an empty stomach. That literally crazy. happened to me. The, the the one time I went to early morning workouts for the football team, like. And I got there and I was just, I took a multivitamin before that, just drank some water and was like running and doing laps. And I got so sick. I like had to stop and like projectile vomited. Uh, and the coaches all thought I like had went out that night, you know, past curfew or something and got a little drunk and like, they're going to have a rough practice it's a, today. It's a nasty, not, it's not like mild. It's like, no, it's, no, you want to vomit. Yeah. It'll bother me yeah. until I eat something and then that gets digested. It still takes like another hour or two. Wow. So. I'll feel awful. It's weird because I get nauseous hella easy. Motion sickness hella easy. Yeah, but not that. Supplements, never. I've never taken a supplement that made me nauseous. That's Mm. funny. I know. I was made for them. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you know what's funny? So my voice is still strained. I don't understand why is it taking so long? Like a a little bit of laryngitis or whatever. And it made me think of something. So I've been getting messages, and this is happening a lot. By the way, I haven't seen it happen with you guys. You just got to stop yelling at everybody. I haven't. That's that's racist, Max. I'm a time. I haven't (laughs) seen this happen to you guys yet. But this already happened to me now, like at least six times. There's companies that are using my face, my image, my voice, AI switching it to selling their bullshit products that we're not affiliated with. Yeah. I've seen it happen so many times. Yeah. And I also want to tell you guys it's not happening with you. So <laughs> pick, most pick likely because you do all the talking. And just yeah, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> probably they gotta sift through a lot of something to do volume with volume before yeah. they get like, this. Yeah. I say this sells them. Yeah. No, it's, it's so it's happening a lot, and it's kind of it's weird, dude. It's really weird. I don't know how I feel about it. It's making me a little bit, um, it's just strange because people are are posting in the forum and I see a clip and it's me talking. Then it goes over to a commercial and then it's my voice still. Yeah. But now I'm saying a bunch of shit I never said and yeah. I'm promoting some other product. I'm like, that's sketchy, dude. It is weird because I saw, I obviously I've seen like Ro- Rogan clips where they've done that to him and I've seen that with like Huberman, like a, a lot of other podcasts, but it, like, that seems to be a trend right now to try and hijack uh, these platforms to sell their own products on Instagram or it's slimy. Well, I've, I've seen it too. Social media. I mean, is it though? It's not really if it, uh, what's slimy. Of course it's slimy. No. It's not me. Well, no. So there's two ones I've, there's two different types I've seen that people are, are using of you. I have seen the AI generated one where someone literally manipulates your voice to say their brand and you've never said their brand before. That's slimy. But there, I've seen other brands that are, that were smart and strategic. They take clips of you dropping science that's or referring to a, a okay. product or, or this, whatever and why you like it or the benefits of it. And then it clips away from you and shows like someone working out and then somebody else is talking about their brand. That's just shitty AI. I've listened to it again. No, it's, it's trying not. to make my voice. You, I it, it's a different voice. It, yeah, thank you, Doug. In the forum, even people were saying it. Bro, I don't care well, what your forum it sound, The guy sounds a it's bit like you, but it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's not shitty AI because AI could do such, yes. such a better job. Okay, yes. fine, yeah. whatever. And, it's still and, implying no, that I'm- but It does imply. That's smart. That. That's smart marketing, though. I mean, one, we when we put our information out there. Let me ask you this: here, Would you ever do that? Would you ever get someone else that's not? Yes, affiliated that's with why us? I said. So I think it's smart. Who I would you post? Smart. If so, for example, if we had, uh, say, Andrew Huberman, who's you know the like everybody talks about right now. 
was talking about full body workouts and how much it's it's the best way to do things and all the research and the studies. And then it clips over. We would cl I would have our team clip over to people doing a, a pro part of our program from Maps, and then and it, and in one of our voices talking about our program, and then sell it. That's smart. That's not bad marketing. Uh, I think it's slimy. It's not. No, it's it, not. It, it's not slimy at all. I think I'm, I'm watching it, and it implies that I'm working with them or selling the product is what it looked like to me and it's annoying well I I, it's I, annoying. okay kind of but it's to me it's it's fair game it's fair game you truly said it yeah and then i and then we it's a it, it aligns with our brand or what we're marketing well and the so, weird part is this whether, whether you agree or not whatever the weird part is this is that it's getting really weird dude it's it, we're, we're not far away from uh people being able to fuck with each other in big ways. Well, yeah, I think, I think, manipulate, I think weird. manipulating like CGI stuff with someone's face or their, and truly using AI to say something you didn't say. That's I think, but I think the other way is fair. I mean, Doug, what do you think from a marketing perspective? Yeah, I think it's fair. I think so too. Yeah. Not that we are happy about it. Yeah. Right. Or endorse those products. I, I don't think it's illegal, but well, you, it's definitely you, think not it's, illegal. you think it's great. Well, I mean, it's like anybody who's an authority, you want to use yes. their information. Do you think it implies to, that I'm I'm selling their product or Well, it does stuff? if your voice says you're selling their product, but mm -hmm. it doesn't if they clip away from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah, that's kind of a, you know, kind of hazy there because somebody could put two and two together and yeah. think, oh, wow. Sal That's what makes it. it smart. Yeah. What makes it smart is to your point that it kind of implies that. Well, kind of does because you're, you're endorsing this way of training and then it clips over to their pro someone yeah. talking about their product. Yeah. But I mean, that's what makes it smart. Is that your face and your, your lips saying all that, you know? Yeah. That's different. different. That's But, but lying. too, like, like on YouTube, they'll, this is how a lot of these streamers like they make their their bones. Like they'll take clips from authority people and then they'll wrap it in with like graphics and all this and then they'll try and like recap it and I don't know. It's not like that much different than that, I guess. Well, you, think about I, the journeyman, right? That clip was repurposed hundreds of times. Yeah, yeah we didn't care because it was not yeah, promoting. Yeah, but anything. that was just more like I I see where you're trying to go with that. I don't know. It kind of bothers me because it implies that I'm working with the company. I've never approved whatever the product is. Here's what I don't want to happen, okay? What I don't want to, and this hasn't happened yet, so I'm not saying this has happened, but what I don't want to happen is for somebody, a fan or whatever, to get uh, misdirected, to buy some shit, to hurt themselves, or to believe that we said something we didn't say. That's what I don't. That, I mean, that's wrong. Me. Yeah, with it, then but, we have to go. But if it's something you said offense. and you definitely said it, and it aligns with my brand, like say, like I've seen the the rubber bands one, and you have definitely said the benefits of rubber bands, and you say that, and then it clips to me selling rubber my my product, which is rubber bands or whatever. Like that's fair game, yeah. and it aligns with what you're saying. I don't see anything wrong with that. Anyway, that's good marketing for the audience. If they want to know what we do endorse, it's on mindpumppartners.com. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the only place you'll find. There you go, Doug. <laughs> if you ever have a question, go there. We have. I'm glad you brought that up because I actually I still have to answer a lot of DMs that way. Like any time that we we really talk about products and you want discount codes or access to those those companies. Uh, it's always at mindpumppartners.com. Speaking of crappy companies, Justin brought this up. And this <laughs> this uh, re this resurfaces every once in a while in the, I don't know, if, I guess you could put this in the health space. These posture straps you just showed oh, me. Oh, yeah. I've seen oh, those yeah. come in and out those of, were, of our space. I saw these, yeah, it was at that convention. I was at two and they were trying to explain their way through it. And it's like, I understand the thought process of like your average person's like, well, you know, this could help them at least get into that position. And maybe this will, obviously it's going to feel better when you're in alignment and you're stacked and you're in good posture, but you know, the, there's no like, um, th this is basically like a cast at that point, right? Yeah, it's a so crutch. It's, it's a totally. crutch. Not and, just the crutch. And there's no, yeah, there, there was no like, um, mobility, uh, any kind of like programming to like help you to achieve that, uh, muscularly on your own. It went, well, what it does is, uh, these straps that hold you in, in, in better posture, right? What they do is they put you in better posture, but now the muscles involved with doing that, not only are they already weak because you can't do it. Yeah. They're going to get weaker. It's replacing faster. them. Yeah. No, they're going to get weaker. You're going to actually make yourself much worse 
because now you're in a position you become reliant, on depending, you become reliant on the strap, and it makes things now just playing devil's advocate though, because I agree with you guys, and and I th we've talked about these straps before. I, uh, the first time I saw them, they were in the on those airplane, you know, in the airplane magazines where they have all kinds of random. Yeah, you ever yeah, seen yeah. those <laughs> random stuff? In there? Who buys? Does anybody buy things from those magazines? Uh, I mean, does somebody asked me, or else they yeah. wouldn't spend money in there, yeah. right? So that someone was huge does. back in the day. But yeah, so that was the first time I'd ever seen those, and I think we clowned on them years ago. How ridiculous it was for all the points that we're making. I do know though. I I mean, if I was personally using it, I know how to use it to be a beneficial thing. So if you were if you were actively doing it with a program, I could see the the benefit of it. It'd be like because like right now, I'm just like your external kind of feedback, so you at least get them in that position, yeah. so they're aware of it. And you're also stretching the muscles that are overactive from that poor posture too, right? So you're opening up the muscles that are already shortened and tightened because you're always in this like rounded position. Now, again, this is just me playing mm. devil's advocate. I don't agree. I think it's terrible for 95% of the people. But if I was training somebody or I was when doing When would you have them wear it? Like in like sitting down, like you- All day? When they're at work at a computer or a desk- and then, and then, and then I would see you twice a and week. And then I would have them get them? up and do band pull aparts oh, like and we take already it tell. off and then work. work yeah, you, yeah. You, so you I could find a way to, because yeah. you're also getting what you are doing is because, so from that, like you get put in that position. Like, so, okay, or let's say I'm not, I don't have the strap on. Everything I do, right, I do from this, this bad rounded position. And so I'm only forming that anymore. At least if I have this thing pulling me here, now I have to get used to moving all my other muscles from that position. So that has some positive benefit. I am weakening that still without adding exercise to strengthen I'm it. wondering how the overcompensations, though, would happen because you're not holding yourself in that position, then having to overcompensate with other uh, uh, other patterns to perform what you're tr trying to perform. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thought. Yeah. But I, I mean, I think the clear, uh, the clear thought though, the clear thing is like, it's no different than if you have weak legs. So what you do is you attach yourself to a machine that makes you walk, but, but the machine itself is doing the walking. Now you can walk, but whatever strength you did have in your legs is going to be gone. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have any sort of plans to to strength train with it, then it's absolutely a it's terrible like idea. the weight belt that yeah. you see. But like to your point, like that, that's how you rehab a knee. You yeah. rehab, you rehab a knee surgery where you have a machine that's manually doing it all for you at first. Oh, but that's different. That's the that's the main, to get back range of motion because things are tight uh, after surgery. Which definitely that's 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 a, a different story. Right. But you know what it reminds me of like uh, like the guys at uh, Home Depot that will wear uh, the yeah, weight belts yeah. all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah like they're making their yeah. their they're making their back weaker. So the yeah. minute they take it off and they're at home and they pick up like a lighter box. Like you, it's like so you know what a good example of this is? Do you guys remember, um, used to, do you guys ever read uh, Guinness Book of World Records when you're kids? Yeah. Do you remember the women with the longest necks in the world? Do you remember mm -hmm. those? They were mm -hmm. like, I don't remember what country it was, but yeah. they, they stack Africa. rings. They stack the rings. Yeah. So it was some yeah. African nation. They would stack these rings and then they couldn't take the rings off yeah. because their neck muscles had gotten so weak that when they would take them off, they're, oh, it, it, okay. yeah, it would cause lots of problems. It's like that, right? Yeah. They would get supported by the rings and you take them off and then. Yeah. I mean, those, everything you're giving are all these examples yeah. of someone not adding extra. And of course, that's, that's why I think we all agree they're terrible. My point of playing devil's advocate is just like, I could see how I could use it. Yeah, uh, as a potential tool, but I don't think it's yeah. you know. Oh, what yeah. what country is that? So Myanmar. That's not, where? Myanmar. That's We're, not an Af African nation at all. No, there We're, was another country uh, that did it too. Myanmar though. used to be Burma, I believe. Was it? Yeah. What an interesting practice! Wow. I was actually having this conversation with my my fourteen year old. Oh, look how long I know, dude. We were talking about um, like crazy. We were talking about like uh, like how society can it, like there's natural there are natural signs of beauty. That, that I think are objective, that display good health. And then there's societal imposed, uh, you know, ideals of beauty. So we're having this conversation about this, right? Like, um, and I, I brought up that example and I talked about foot binding. She never heard of foot binding. Uh, really? Yeah, no. Oh. And so she's like, what did they do? I'm that like, well, they, awful, ever dude. since they were little, these women in China would, they'd wrap their feet up, yeah. their feet up. And, keep them in tiny shoes. and they'd have these tiny little feet. And she's like, we keep their foot small. I said, no. I said, well, do you want to look up the images? Yes. So she did. Breaks them and folds them under. Oh, if, yeah. It makes the foot like yeah. fold over like a, like a hoof. And then we talked about corsets and what that did to women in the, you know, in the, the, the you know, 18th and 19th yeah, well, they century. They used to have like fainting couches just because of that. Like every now and Cause they and couldn't they breathe just, fully. You can't breathe. Yeah. You can't expand your lungs uh, uh, fully. Yet. That's where the whole What's uh, crazy is that that has made its way back, which is crazy to me. Cor oh. Thanks Kardashians. Yeah. yeah. Just rebranded. Isn't that funny that that became, it was so common that that was just, uh, Oh, women faint sometimes. 
Yeah, exactly. That's what they do. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, we need furniture yeah. for this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honey, mind. go by the couch real quick. Yeah, never mind fixing the root cause. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Dude, that's like a that's a hack though. If like the party is really boring and you know, and you just want a, an out, it's just. <sighs> yeah. Do you know? <laughs> I, mean, I would. Hey, I would do that. Hey, honey, if I cough three times, I want you to pass out. Yeah. And take that <laughs> yeah. Did you know that the, uh, the, uh, there was an official medical um, diagnosis? I, I think it, they took it out. Not that long ago. Like, I think it was like in the 1940s. It might have taken up 30s. Do you know they used to have an official medical diagnosis for women called hysteria? Do you mm -hmm. know this? Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Hysteria? Hysteria. Yeah. And then the cure was like your wife's basically act, like a Like your vibrator. wife's acting irrational. That, isn't that when they used to go do that, like, shock therapy to them to try and to try and solve it? They would use a vibrator. Yeah, use a vibrator. Oh, that's the vibrator story. I shared that story a long yeah, time ago. I yeah, remember yeah. that now. Look up, when was hysteria... Uh, taking out of uh, as the as like an official medical diagnosis. <laughs> you imagine it's a, yeah, that it's you're a hilarious. woman and you're just your husband's acting like the things shit. that and I think takes the doctor and the doctor's like, we, listen, you're suffering from hysteria. Sure. <laughs> She's yeah. like, he beats me. No, what no, I think is so crazy is when, uh, when conversations like this what? is like 1980. What? Wow! All the way to 1980. Hold on a second. Whoa! Hold on a second. In the 1970s, you could get diagnosed with an, the a hysteria. Dude, that's they called it hysterical neurosis. But what, what what were the symptoms of this? I got to see what this is. Okay. Look, look up the symptoms of, of hysterical So the, the, the part about this that it trips me out is the people like today that like whatever science says or whatever the doctors are saying right now it's true. is the truth. And yeah. you guys are like, you're denying science. Like they've never been wrong before. Yeah. It's like, and here's like, these crazy examples of like people being prescribed. Science or, is a process. It's not like the result. Like it, it, It's so frustrating to hear people say that and like, you know, Believe the science. And I'm like, yeah, well, science is like you're continually proving your your hypothesis, which becomes, you know, you have to go through like all of the empirical data science and evidence. A, it's a scientific method. It's, a, it. it's a process. Okay, yeah, it's okay a you're going to love this definition. Theory. All right, what's the definition? Like a hysterical neurosis. Individuals with hysterical neurosis suffer from recurrent frustration and victim mentality, always exaggerating the negative aspects of their lives and worrying unhealthily about all sorts of issues, obsessing over things beyond their control. Wow. So everybody on social media needs exactly. A we need to bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you're all hysterical. I, well, well, okay, so, so you know what? I, I'm surprised they took it out because think of all the drugs you could prescribe. Yeah. for something like that. I'm sure though what they did is they took that and some of those fall into OCD. I was going to say they probably just, like, yeah, yeah, they divided the them up and made more. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right. They divided that's them like, into three different prescriptions. Yeah. Well, you not only have that, you have this and this yeah. too actually. Yeah. Yeah. Look up uh, that's like when I found out, I think I brought this up a while back, but like when I found out the last time somebody well, when they stopped actually like using the guillotine to like execute people. It was like not that long ago. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it was like the 70s or something. Really? Yeah. 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 Is it? Is it that? That's correct. We we looked it up once. Wow. I think it was drop remind me. Also, remind me. I was like, what, wow. What was what was uh, what was the original reason for Kellogg's? What was his uh, to keep people from jerking off? That's what it was. Huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think it, that was it literally, literally, literally. He. This is how he. This is what he did. He says, "I'm going to make a no breakfast." Frost flakes. He believed Kellogg was a doctor, and yeah. he believed that chronic masturbation was this whatever. And he said that uh, foods that are too tasty or too stimulating encourage masturbation. So he created a food that was so bland. That's literally what it said. <laughs> I'm going to make a food so bland, you're not going to want to touch yourself. And now we turn yeah. it into cereal. We sell it to people. Yeah. <laughs> and we sell it to kids. Yeah. Really crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I say like the evolution of that is frosted flakes, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah so what does that one make that, you right? do? 1977 was the last time the guillotine was used. Wow. You think about it. Hysteria in the 80s and 77 with a gear. That's wild. I know. How it's, can you do that though, right? Like you just, just maintaining at least. Who's like the guy that pulls Medieval the practices. I don't know, but think about the electric chair or something yeah, electric else. electric chair which is pretty, pretty more too, pretty fucked about. up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we had to put a bag over guys, your face. So you can't the lethal see the injection, I think that's probably the best. Are you guys, you so, all right, so here we go, controversial. Are you guys like, like, are you, do you guys like the death penalty? You guys think that should exist in yeah, general? But, you do? But it, yeah, it depends. I mean, obviously- Eye for an eye, I, I I'm very mixed on it. I'm 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 totally against. It. I'm yeah, really, yeah. yeah you know why? Because you can make board, mistakes. For sure. That's the only reason. Well, I, I definitely believe that's, that's the only reason? thing that catches oh. me is to have like because uh, there are people that have, have been executed wrongfully. Yeah, There's a lot the of people in jail people wrongfully. Getting, I know, yeah. and I, that is a, that is a conundrum. That's why I'm, I'm not like yeah, let's listen, kill. Them. Listen, I'll be straight up. Like if somebody about it. if somebody did something to my family or my kids. Uh, I would want to personally kill them myself. So I'm gonna. I'm not saying uh, you know. Well, it, it depends. But what I am saying is, 
We've made mistakes. Is it a yeah. deterrent though? It's. I think the evidence shows it's not. I Does it? No, I think the evidence shows it is uh, not I'd a like deterrent. To that. Yeah, that it, it doesn't deter uh, people from from any crimes. Yeah, crimes. only because like for me, it's it's like a consequentially like so. I just feel like we've removed a lot of like really severe consequences from society to where now it's so watered down. Like I just see more crime. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're what right. About, what about what about cutting your hand off or stealing? Well, that's oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, huh? that's crazy. <laughs> That's, Other cultures don't them. think so. I, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I mean, bro, you cut some. And again, what if we get it I wrong? I bet that works as a deterrent, though. <laughs> to steal? <laughs> yeah. To not steal? I mean, yeah. So does throwing them in jail, which we don't do that anymore. Now you can steal. You live in San you think? Are you think throwing people in jail is a deterrent? For, for, for theft? Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, yeah? Well, look what happened in, in San Francisco when they, lo when they made it so that you had to steal over $1,000 to go to jail. Now theft went through the roof. With all these criminals that are stealing out of cars and stuff like that, because they don't go anywhere. No. So it's definitely a deterrent. Imagine if you cut their hands off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you. Imagine, imagine if you cut their hands off. How much? They Bro, would you've be given stealing. someone a life sentence for stealing because now they walk around with no hand. Everybody knows for the most part. How'd you, oh, how'd you lose that hand? I mean, and imagine how many young kids growing up would know that law and that rule and would would definitely not want to steal because they uh, want to keep what their about, hands. What uh, about uh, neutering pedophiles? Oh yeah. I'll tell you I'm for it. Yeah. You know, I'll again, it out there right now. again, again, I, I'm afraid that we make mistakes, but yeah, when you talk about pedophiles. Like, we're going to make mistakes to across, across all board. Like, well, going back to the, sure the, the death penalty and the people back. that were innocently killed. I mean, to me, what's more wrong with that is that like how that came about. Like, I definitely don't think it should happen unless with beyond a shadow of a doubt that we, we know the person has to have admitted Yes, I killed them, or we have like visual we proof. We still have made mistakes. Well, that's so that's what I'm. But you know, not because that if someone saw them kill them or they admitted. Oh, no, like, did you know that there's cases where people say, "Yeah, I did it. I admit it." They have evidence. They kill them later on. They find out DNA. No, the guy was just crazy, and they said they did it, but they didn't. There's actual mm -hmm. stories like that. It's weird. It's wild. Yeah, right? it's crazy. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. The it's other part it's, of me it's that not does, perfect. I mean, here's I, the other part of me that doesn't like it. The only legal entity in the world that can kill people is also the entity that I trust the least. Right. The government. It's, it's tough. Like, who are we empowering to make that decision? The right? government, man. It's like, okay, you know, they could kill. Like, like, like we, we, we can kill people now. Um, we can now kill people if we think they're a terrorist, but we don't have to go to uh, through, tr through judge, trial, or jury. We can imprison them forever. Mm -hmm. And if they're overseas, we can kill them. We did. Obama did. He, he drone bombed some kid. Yeah. And there was no, no, they didn't take it to court or anything. They just said, oh, he's a terrorist and he's overseas. Therefore he's a, it's a, it's a war, you know, uh, it's, it's a war scenario. So they droned him and his dad, which is kind of crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So, it, so then in your opinion, then like, uh, instead of death penalty, you just put him in jail for life or whatever. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's, uh, cause that's pretty damn miserable You know where too, the big, right? the, the big mean, issues are truthfully is I think what Justin was kind of alluding to, which is. Uh, uh, property crime, uh, like property crime, hurting people, you know, stealing that kind of stuff should be punished. Um, yeah. those are the things that should be punished, uh, mo more severely. That's right? really, a, yeah, that's what it amounts to me is like hurting somebody else. For like, sure. That's like, the big one. Yeah. Just to really put that out there. Like we're not going to tolerate this, Yeah, you know, and that, and that's, and I don't like, I don't like the fact that like people, cause it, I, I'm all for redemption too, you yeah. know, and then that's the thing. But if there's no signs of redemption or like. You know, what's interesting too, is as we get further along with science, like how we'll be able to identify, you know, uh, brain patterns and people early on and like, see kind of like, cause they're, they're looking into like what makes a, a serial killer. And like, you know, sometimes there's like genetic factors. And I think, I think of what, one of the things that should happen is, is the loosening of the laws in the self-defense area. Yes. So like you come in my house to steal my shit and you get shot. That's your bad. Like, yeah, you, you yeah. know, whether you were armed or not armed, you in, enter my property to steal some I shit. I agree or, on that. Yeah. If you come in, are you, you Attack my wife, yeah, my you, kids. You yes. attack, you attack my family or my kids. You get shot. That's your bad. Yeah, you know but how saying? is that any like, different than than um, you know executing somebody for actually doing the crime? Yeah, in the, it's, when it's in the act, that's different. If you're defending yourself in the act, so let me okay, so, so you don't, so it's actually real time yes. versus, versus like a, a committee yeah, yeah, like, trying well, to, trying exactly, to, that's I, what I'm yeah, saying, like, and, and it's and it's up to me to be able to protect myself that way. Yeah, so I wish it was like if somebody stole your shit and then a week so later- So it's more like Wild West. Uh, yes, I like no, Wild I mean, West. No, I like it's not Wild, Wild West, West look. Yeah, here's yeah. a little close. No, no, no. Step outside, 20 paces, bro. <laughs> no, this is, stop, stop. This is all a slippery slope. It is. Well, that's why it's so complicated. we're gonna hate from this, so we're already in it, so that's all right. That's why it's so complicated. 
West is this. Somebody breaks in your house, they escape, you find them a week later and then you kill them. That's wrong. Hmm. If they're in your house in the process and you shoot them. That's self-defense. That's, yeah. That's, that's what I'm, so I just think that we've gotten right. so ridiculous, especially in the state of California with stuff like that. It's like, you, I feel like you're almost afraid to defend yourself. I mean, I've, I've paid for all this insurance and stuff that to protect myself that in case someone comes in to kill us and I shoot them, I have some sort of a yeah. defense. Like, that's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that I, I I have to be worried not only about the person come in, intruding, about, but how I, how I defend myself, I have to, that's crazy. Uh -huh. Did you guys yeah. hear, speaking of serial killers, you hear about, I think it was a professor, it's a true story. He uh, came up with this, he has a test that will test, and I, it's like an established test that finds uh, sociopaths. There's all these, these um, uh, markers of a sociopath. And he had all of his students and himself, everybody filled out this test and he kept it anonymous. Well, one person came up uh, at, like strongly as a sociopath and he recognized that it was his test and he didn't know this. So he actually was a sociopath. <laughs> oh, I heard about this. And yeah. then he, and then what he yeah. did was, is he tried to figure out, well, why am I not? Cause he didn't kill people. He's not a bad person. It's like, well, what made, what made me not become this crazy killer and what makes other people. And so it, it took him on this whole journey. Mm -hmm. But how crazy is that? He did a test. And he's I like, mean, I oh, also shit. think that's how, yeah. I mean, back to our original point of like talking about how studies and data and science is flawed. It's like, okay, so that's a bit flawed that we've decided this, these questions determine whether you're yeah, a sociopath yeah. Yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, that's maybe you can find to me. That's where they're, 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 this is the holes in a, a lot of the stuff that we, we tout as, research and data mm -hmm. and science and fact it's like mm -hmm. okay because someone de decided that these series of questions determine you're a sociopath and you happen to answer them that way therefore you're a sociopath yeah. now like come on that's yeah. flawed yeah so it's i think doug you would go uh professor found out he's a sociopath it was a really crazy story that i read oh the neuroscientist it was a neuroscientist uh james fallon yeah james he fallon he found out that his own brain fit the pattern um, it was, oh, it was pet scans. It was, it was actually pet scans. It was actually brain scans of murderers uh, and schizophrenics, depressives, and so normal he had brains. the same sort of neural like a uh, path that, that looks just like a so here, here's what happened. He was sociopath. looking at scans of murderers, schizophrenics, depressives, and normal brains. And then out of serendipity, he was also doing a study on Alzheimer's. And as part of that, he did brain scans from himself and everyone in his family on his desk. And then he got to the bottom of the stack and he saw that his scan was obviously pathological. In in regards to science, what do you think is the most, <laughs> That's crazy. like what are the top like three to five things that are most murky? Like universe, Psychology. universe, brain, gut. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's like just, what, like those, like the, when yeah. you think of like our, like the stuff that we have around science yeah. or research that we tout as like fact. Well, history, like, History. Oh, you're gonna go conspiracy stuff again, Justin. You think about who <laughs> who controls that knowledge. I mean, I don't I don't disagree with I you. I mean, that, you're not wrong. Listen, I don't disagree with you that I'm there's a bunch of. I mean, I don't disagree today. with you that yeah. there's a. But at least there's some documentation of a fact story stuff like that. Yes, it gets manipulated. Yeah, you can get. You can. Get, I think like you can parse it together, but you have but to still I, create a narrative. But I think you know gut. You know, brain universe is like well, like psychology. Really well, that's way more complex. Human behavior and psychology. That, that's one which of the, is brain. Yeah, it's one of the least uh, duplicatable when it comes to studies. Yeah, well, show, it's this like, study it's like shows ne it like never replicates. They can never. Uh, um, I think it's like eighty something percent are uh, they unable to replicate, which is why the Gottmans, uh, John Gottman, his wife, his study on like the the traits that determine whether or not you get divorced, whether or not you're going to have a good relationship why that's so held in such high regard is because they've duplicated it, I think, seven times. Yeah. And the data's come out the same. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it stood out. But yeah, human behavior is like so, uh, we know so little. We yeah. think we know so much. Can you of think it. of it? I mean, to me, those are the three that come to mind right away. Yeah. Brain. But, yeah, and the gut is really because it's new. It's emerging and there's so many moving parts or it's going to require AI, in my opinion, to really figure that out. Yeah. But human behavior is a weird one, man, because it's like we're, it's our human behavior studying other human behavior, and we don't know very much about it. So, uh, of those three, where do you mm -hmm. think we're making the biggest strides right now? In oh, um, that's a good question. I think uh, how the gut affects us and our health. I think over the next ten years with AI is going to get really interesting. That's yeah. what I think. Well, I think gut has been the biggest focus as of late. Like we probably didn't know as much uh, until recently, yeah. until, especially the bacteria and uh, you know, all of that with the metabolism. But I, I think too, like, I mean the brain, like it, we've, we've come a long way with the brain in terms of now understanding, like, you know, that there's microtubules in the brain that they've identified quantum phenomena. Do you know that? 
explain that. So quantum phenomena, quantum physics is weird, and I'm by no means an expert, but it, when you when they try to explain it and break it down, it's, it, it looks like magic. Like uh, these particles act this way, but if you look at them, literally, if you just look at them, they act a different way. They pop in and out of existence. If we entangle two, you know, particles. You move one, the other one moves instantly. So it's like communicating through space yeah. infinitely fast. We can't understand that. And they've identified that gets so complex. They've it's identified quantum phenomena in the brain. So they think maybe there's some quantum aspects of of the brain that helps develop our consciousness and the mind, which is really weird. It's like what is going on here? Yeah. With yeah. That? Which kind of lends itself to the theory. I think Doug, you've said this before that the brain is more of a re uh, receiver. Yeah, like a signal. Yeah, yeah, like a receiver and a processor rather than like the origin of. Uh, you know, of, of consciousness. Well, I mean, we used to just remove parts of the brain. You know? Lobotomy. Yeah, yeah. When did they yeah. stop doing those? That that was that wasn't right, that right. long ago. You ever it, seen ads so, for lobotomies? Old old ads. Oh, I think yeah. I think I have. They yeah. have. Oh, it's terrible. It's bro. 1967. Mm. What? They were doing lobotomies in 1967. That's like that's medieval. Like it, it made it that far. Do you? So if you look up old ads on lobotomies, I've seen one, and it's like like you bring your family members. Like here's uh, here was Susan before, and she's like got this really sad, weird looking face. This was her after. She's like, <laughs> yeah, just this really weird looking smile. Now. Yeah, she's been saved by lobot by lobotomies. Oh, oh god, god, that's Ugh. terrible. It's brutal. <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean. Not definitely not defending lobotomies, but imagine though, like because of how little we knew about so many of these like disorders yeah, and schizophrenia, yeah, yeah, and you're just yeah, and, yeah. and just we're 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 scrambling for answers to how to fix it and solve yeah. it. And so you know what we could do is cut out half their brain. Yeah. Oh. Work. Just, you know, at the time they're just following the science. Yeah, yeah, it, right. No, exactly. that's my point of this whole thing. That's that such a good is, point. It's like, it, what do we do now? Where we say cut this off, cut this, do that, add this drug. Oh, it fixes this kid, this person, or whatever. And nobody's questioning. That's why it. it's so important to admit when we're wrong, you know, and, and to go through and be like, "Well, yeah, we messed up here, and we're gonna we're gonna address this and investigate." You know, the big the instead big, of trying to gaslight everybody, like, "Oh, yeah, we did all these good things, but yeah, that might happen." You know, humanity is marred by one of the biggest uh, challenges, or maybe in, in, in religions we call it sins of intelligence, which is arrogance or pride. Like we're so smart. And therefore, we think we know everything, and then we don't question anything. There's no humbleness. So it's like, no, this is the right answer. Do that. You know, drill a hole. Take out this part of the brain. Now look, she's smiling. Totally worked. Totally fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, crazy. Anyway, speaking of the gut, I know. And say, bacteria. I thought I, I thought I gave you a layup earlier. You and did, you, and now you wonder. <laughs> you just like, called it out. It's like, it's like so. trying to underhand pitch that to you. I was like, trying uh, to be smooth, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just leave it. Leave it. No, no. So, listen, I do want to say this about the gut. There are certain strains of bacteria we know for sure have beneficial effects. We've isolated those. We know this. We, when people supplement with them, when people take them, so long as they get delivered in the right parts of the body, they do improve digestion, reduce inflammation. They seem to help anxiety and depression in some people, help with skin. Those, those strains, the bifido strains, the lactobacillus strains, and other strains, we know are healthy for whatever reason. And the best part about it is you don't have to cut out part of your brain for this to... <laughs> That is that's a benefit. Yeah. It's just, By the way, have you seen the, seeds for shock uh, therapy or doing any sort of vibrators? <laughs> like, there's nothing like that. You just gotta take no this. old school methods. Yes. Apply. Yeah. Yeah. Vibrators haven't gone away though. They yeah. still they're still there. Yeah. They just don't get your doctor doesn't use one on you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Did you um, did you guys see the new ads that C, that seed is running on? No, um, really cool. So they so they have what makes seed unique. Part of what makes it unique, besides the how, you know the, the strain combination they use, is that it's a two capsule system. So there's an outer capsule and an inner capsule. The outer capsule uh, I, it protects it from going through the gut. The inner capsule has got a prebiotic that feeds the bacteria. And they show in the video how it goes through the gut, how it goes through the stomach, goes through the gut, and then makes it to the colon. And that's where it delivers now, were the they, bacteria. Now, are they able to, to patent that? That's them. Mm -hmm. nobody so they can. can. Nobody, so nobody else can do that. Nobody has that. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that, that's, that's only seed. That's cool. And they have a machine. Uh, I don't remember what they call it. They actually have a machine. It's supposed yeah. to simulate that, right? And you can watch it. The whole the digestive board. process. Yeah, yes. you watch it. Yeah. I, the thing cool. I was most impressed with, see, when we first started working with them and we, we met them is the team they have. Like they've they've gone around the world. Oh, they've world got the best in the world. And yeah, got the best researchers in that field. And so, of course, they would develop something. Oh, else. yeah. There, there's there's nobody that comes close to the, the pedigree of people that they have. But it's a delivery yeah. method. That's the only, it's the, it's the, pre, the one probiotic I've used the most consistently for, I've now used it for years and years and years. I used to have to switch probiotics every so often. You guys know that? I used to take one. 
then I'd get pet, some positive benefits, and then I'd get some negative effects, and then I'd have to go off and switch to a different one, and I was constantly switching. It was, and seeds is the only one I've used for years now. Every night, I take it before uh, before bed on empty stomach, every yeah. single night. It's yeah. the best one. <clears throat> I uh, was talking to Katrina last night. I'm super excited about the Las Vegas uh, trip that we have coming up, right? Oh, Aside the live from, event? Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited to see everybody, but I'm even more excited that we're going to go do the track day. And I saw the cars that you guys chose. You guys know, yeah. the track yeah. day, right? I'm so, not doing that. Yeah, what do you think? I Well, so your, yours is on my radar as like my next whip. So I love that you're doing oh, that. Oh, okay, yeah. I can't I, wait to talk to you about I that. wanted to go because, of course, of, you know, what uh, you have access to. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to do something different. No, I'm, so I'm, glad, you, I'm yeah. glad you did that. So you, he's doing the 992 GTRS, which oh. is Porsche's like track car that's like, the Porsche yeah. track car. I've always been like, a Porsche fan. So. I love them. Yeah. That's so that's cool. cool. Doug, I think you're doing the same as me. The, we're doing the 488 Pista. Yeah. What's yeah. That? Which is the the like Ferrari model that's the... So it's the 488. You guys are familiar with yeah. that. The Pista is like their their next model up. So it's got like an extra like 50 to 70 horsepower than the the regular 488 has. So, and it's... The, I didn't realize that. So most of these like track... that Because I'd looked up this to do this before. Um you know, they have kind of the not old but older model like like 5 to 10 years back or whatever that that that, that uh pista that we're driving that's like like in the last year that's a new new model and same thing with your 992 like th those You know are what car I've always wanted to drive hmm. the um oh god now I can't believe I forgot Dodge uh oh, Hellcat the, the no, Demon no, no 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 Dodge it used to be the one minivan no. the Viper <laughs> Viper <laughs> the Viper <Not> minivan <laughs> <laughs> Caravan, <laughs> so much room, <laughs> so spacious. Did you see? I saw no, the Dodge Viper, bro. Oh, these old, videos, I've like driven old one school, of those. Big ass, yeah, like yeah. you know, I mean, how, how cubic engines that you know that that, that that engine was. I've always wanted to drive one of those. I mean, that was an eight hundred horsepower car, but when cars weren't even th th uh, four horsepower. Yeah, there. I think that's actually on the list. You could do that, so you could drive. You could drive. The no, Viper. I'm supposed to go, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna I bring. I think I'm bringing my niece back um, to to come stay with us. Uh, over the summer, so that's why I'm not doing that. With so you you're taking off over to do family stuff. We're yeah. going to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. cool though. We're gonna we have uh, you know five laps, and originally I, I wanted Katrina to do more. She's like the guy actually said five's a lot. I mean it'll be a few hours, like three hours. We'll be out there and stuff. Wait, three hours? Oh, wow. well, no, because they train you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So you actually you get a you get a which is really what I want. I actually want I wanted like the co-pilot that's a dry a race driver who's going to be giving me tips on cornering and sliding and all that. that's like what i really want it for it's like i'm gonna do I they want. drive with you in the passenger side to show you i imagine that they do a probably a lap because that'd them. be cool to see what it's because you got a pro driver to see yeah i'm sure like. i'm sure you get both like right? i'm sure that's why it takes so long is that they're they probably get in and and if you're un obviously i'm sure a lot of people are unfamiliar with the, the car they're about to drive and so there's probably a big you know, I'm That's sure we have to watch a video for some safety, and then I'm sure yeah. there's like a tutorial where they're going to take you if around. You're on fire, run out. Oh, yeah, but then, <laughs> save me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, then you get uh, then you get five laps. I mean, pretty reasonable for what we're getting. I mean, I, I think it's. Not, I mean, I, Katrina was like, I thought it was going to be a lot more, more, a lot more expensive. What an interesting one. business. Do you think they own the track, or do you think they rent the track? That's a really interesting question. So they own cars, or they probably. What do you think? They lease them, and yeah, then you they, own those. So they buy them, they own them. Mm -hmm. And then they they rent them out, and then either they rent the track or they own the track. That's the business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, either way, that doesn't change the business, right? It's just whether like, and that would be like a. CPA. And then what do you think they sell the cars after when they're done? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they get rid of them. I'm after. surprised you haven't thought about that. I totally thought right now, I've, asking you questions. You I, I already am. I already am setting up to meet with the CPA to talk about car businesses that I can build or do. That's not one of them because the complexity of that. Yeah, Imagine yeah, yeah. the liability, oh, the drivers, yeah, yeah, the course. track. All that. Uh, an easier car business would be like a Turo business, which like anybody can start. What's up. that? You own cars, and, and then and then you, you probably use Turo already. I bet. Yeah, um, when you guys when you guys go awesome. rent a car, who do you it's rent? Way car better to? than we always cars. rent through Turo, not yeah. through the company. When we go places, I thought we always did uh, so the company. When the company goes places, we go through like a big yeah, name brand yeah, with Enterprise that. Enterprise or something. But yeah, personally, yeah. anytime Katrina and I rent a car, we never go through same Enterprise. We always use Turo. Yeah. Cheaper, better cars. Yeah, yeah but they yeah, have way better airport. car. They, yeah, they they bring they bring it to you. Mm -hmm. So like we come like they literally drive it to you and I eat I meet the guy who owns the car he hands me in keys. the garage you just yes. go to the really? garage and yeah. then yeah I've never done that it's more convenient oh, it's, so it's cheaper better cars huh. it's, yeah yeah they've never done it they've completely you don't need no stupid the stupid kiosk where you're sitting there and they're like typing nonsense in for like an hour I hate that. Like, and you like shop your car before you do it. So like pull it up, Doug. Go like you probably have to have better like uh, history, better driving history, better insurance. Yeah, no, 
And they do background check, but I mean, that's are the cars better? Say, way better. That's yeah. what I mean. I'm yeah. sure they have a better qualification. They're gonna let some, you know. Well, I mean, I don't think I don't think uh, Hertz lets just any weirdo get their car either. Right. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Speaking of companies we don't work with, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's another one. That I mean, I, I want to do this as a side hustle. So I like. Look at that. You can get a Porsche. You can yeah. get all kinds of stuff. Oh, wow. We did that in uh, Sedona. We That's just popular EVs. That's popular. Oh, I'm going right to use there. that. I'm going to use that. So yeah, no, you try it. The next time you travel somewhere, before you rent a car, go. Th and again, I know that we're not promoted to say any of this stuff, <laughs> no, but, but I, I mean, I'm just keeping it real. Like, it's, it's so affordable. It's, though, it is. Know, it's everybody. way better. Like when we yeah. went to Hawaii, we got this sick like custom Jeep. Now is this had like, a lift on it, stereo it's system, super, in it, it's, brand new? Is like, this like the company has the cars or the company serves no, the it's middleman? It's like I own. Ten, a fleet like I, I actually met and exchanged no wonder I own 10 cars and I put it up on tour it's basically it's a it's a um, I get it. arbitrage I like, get it. Yeah, no yeah. wonder yeah wow speaking of companies we don't work with uh I did you know that you online like because of covid and the policies they passed you can, you know how cheap and easy it is to get a doctor online to see you right away to get a prescription do you guys know that we were trying to make a, a, an appointment. Oh, you're talking to me about that. Yeah, yeah. dude. I went online because, uh, you know, we were all sick you know, a few weeks ago. It wasn't that expensive. It was like 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Dude, what? We were trying to make an appointment with the doctor. And they're like, oh, we will see you in, you know, whatever, in, you know, July. I'm like, my wife's about to go to the urgent care. Her face hurts so bad. Yeah. We think she has a sinus infection. So I went online and it was like 40 bucks and you fill out your symptoms and if you need to be meet with them uh, through, you know, Zoom or whatever they will, or if you don't, it doesn't matter. And we so, didn't. They sent in the prescription. It was a done deal. So, okay, this is so rad. Crazy. Like, you see, like, telemedicine. You see Turo. You see these kind of innovative, like, yeah. disruptive companies, like, coming in and helping, you know. The, it's Why haven't they done that for the DMV yet? Because <laughs> oh, you can't. Dude, it's, come on. It's illegal for anybody to uh, administer or give a driver's license uh, aside from a state Sure. Oh, that's so. I, I guess I'm just like sucks. integrate new tech is my uh, I know. Uh, home. I know. Well, well why, you know, it's different. why they're like, not going to so, go out of business. So the way Uber disrupted <laughs> taxi, that's different, right? That's like that way, it wasn't government, right? Yeah. Government's involved. It's freaking. Well, that's why it's a monopoly. You it's can't. like schools. It's like good luck trying to disrupt the universities and things like that. Like people are trying, and they're like, but you still aren't Bro, getting the California same credibility hates as old a Harvard. Cars. I'll tell you that right now. What'd you say? California hates old cars. Are you trying to get something for your? Yeah, it's been a super pain in the ass. Cars in general, bro. It was, it's a headache Why, right wait, now. Wait, hold on. What do you mean? What are you trying to get that they won't get you? Registered? Yes, yeah, registered. Yeah. Why won't they register it? I had the same issues. Uh, I mean, I could go through a laundry list of items, but I, I'm down to like one more thing that I just got. I had to send back to get a signature for somebody that was like this loan officer that didn't sign one with, with like their name, but also their title of their company. And this, like all these things, you're like, what? Like who would even thought to write that you know, extra Justin, I think stuff? it has a lot to do with currently, right? What has happened in the last year with California insurance and so like that because my latest car that I bought I had all the same issues it was a headache yeah the most difficult part of the purchase was literally that not even getting it shipped across the country it was yeah like that was literally easy part. getting it insured inside California was so you know what this is, is people trying to keep their jobs what it is your job is to make sure that if you find any errors, and that's what they do. Because if you don't, you're out of a job. That's what that is. Yeah. What a they wanted to that. do, a, I'm curious if you'll have to do this. Like I had to get a, like luckily I had a cop friend who came to my house, but you're supposed to make an appointment I, at DMV to meet a police they officer. That. They did. See? Yeah. And they want to do a full inspection on the engine. Yeah. And yeah, it's, they did that. I did a full inspection. What like, are they looking for? It's a 1960s. So he song. told me when I was asking him, it's like <laughs> think you're fine. in cars like these, like there's a lot of like fraud yeah, and there's a lot of like, in there. <laughs> and they want to make sure that everything matches the spec that it says. And so, and I don't understand the loopholes where people would be using, taking advantage of this in the system. So your car, it was a modern car. So that doesn't make any sense. And then your car is a classic. So yeah. what is and it the doesn't problem? need to be smogged. What are you they know, looking for? Like, exactly. I, yeah. I have no idea. You tell me. What are they trying to find? <laughs> <laughs> What Walking around and well, making sure all the numbers that. match. So it was a numbers matching thing. Yeah. So sure. okay. So yeah. I don't know if if this has anything to do with it, but I remember when I bought my 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 Camaro a long time ago. I've had that for like fifteen years, and so this this all these new insurance laws and rules didn't apply. Oh, it didn't. But one of the things, okay. Hopefully, I can't get in trouble for something this far back, right? That you can do <laughs> with like an old school like that, right? So obviously, what Justin's buying is really nice and worth a lot of money, but. If it, if the old GTO, if it was a GTO that was, you know, a rust bucket, old, didn't really run, they, the DMV, they don't know the difference of that. They just see the model and the year. That car could technically sell for two grand. 
could also mm-hmm. sell for a hundred grand. Mm-hmm. So the seller and the buyer, a lot of times we'll say on the, all, all the stuff, we'll say it's a $5,000 car. So they have to pay less sales oh, tax yeah, 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 and yeah. you have to, Oh, that's why. So uh, I know okay. that is something that's that it, happens yeah. with like old school. Like just write this down and I'll yeah, pay yeah, cash. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You just agree on, on what okay, it is. Well, that makes handshake sense. deals. Yeah. And so then you, you make out on not having to, especially on a car like a GTO like that, that could easily be worth a hundred thousand dollar car. You buying it for five thousand is a massive difference on sales tax, especially in California. How crazy is it that you really don't own a lot of things? Really? You really don't. You know what I mean? Like you, I own my house. Oh, really? Don't pay property taxes on it. See what happens. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I own my car. Or really don't. I know. Don't, don't pay registration. See or what insurance. Yeah. 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 Weird. Yeah. Wild it's, world. Yeah, they wild always world. find a way. Yeah. They do. Yeah, they, they do. do. Yeah. Anyway, so the shout out, we'll do the the, the, the live event in Vegas. Yes. Live in Vegas. We Let's are gonna go. be meeting. We're gonna be meeting with listeners, fans, trainers, coaches. Vegas, baby. Answering questions, having a great time. Uh go to mindpumplive.com. We should still have tickets by the time this airs. There's hopefully. general admission left still. Yeah. Check it out. You're not what you eat, you're what you digest. There's a company called By Optimizers that makes a product called Mass Zymes. These are digestive enzymes. For people like you, it helps you break down your proteins, your carbs, your fats, improves your digestion, gets those proteins and amino acids so they can deliver it to your muscles, gets those fatty acids so it can help your nervous system, takes those carbohydrates, helps break them down into energy. Check them out. It's great stuff. Go to buyoptimizers.com. That's B I O P T I M I Z E R S dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10, get 10% off your order. All right, back to the show. Our first question is from Lisi Went. What can I do instead of chin-ups and dips in MAPS Anabolic? I'm in phase two and still can't do more than one. Okay, so the best hmm. replacement uh, for both of those are to do them in an assisted way. So some gyms have, most gyms now have um, assisted chin-up and dip machines. So they'll typically have a pad with a weight stack and you can put your knees on it or your mm-hmm. feet. They and call that a gravitron. Is that what they call yeah. it? Yeah, that was yeah. the brand. Yeah, it's a brand. Oh, okay. That yeah, was the yeah, brand. Yeah. Uh, but you could you could add weight to it, and then the weight that you add is how much it's assisting. And, and normally, most of those assisted pull up bars have the dip bar on. They it also. have both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would be the ideal uh, way to do this. Uh, the second way to do it would be to use a resistance band around the bar or around the dip uh, apparatus to also assist you. And the reason why that's ideal is because you're still doing the same movement and you're practicing and learning how to do that movement, um, you're just using assistance. Now, the third option, which is okay too, would be to do pull-ups uh, from, uh, excuse me, pull-downs with the pull-down machine. And then for dips, you could always do bench dips or you could do push-ups or some other pressing movement um, as a replacement. But that would be the three options. Yeah, I, I like the bands. I mean, most most places, uh, and you could do this even with like a regular pull-up bar where you, so I, I normally hang it over, I get like a chair from my client and then they step up and they put their knee in it. Yeah. And so the, it's the band is wrapped around their knee and it goes above the pull-up bar and it's- It takes a little practice to get yeah, used to it. Yeah, it's, I think it's relatively easy once you've done it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then and then you use it with the dip bar. You just wrap it around the dip bar and then same thing, put your knees or your feet uh, in it and use it as an assistant. So as long as you have a band- yeah. Most people can do this in any setting to a system that way. I that tends to be my my first default. But to your point, uh, yeah, you could do alternative exercises that uh, like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, but I do like the uh, weight assisted machines a lot. Mm-hmm. I, I like those a lot. In fact, I still use those myself at the end of a workout if I'm really really fatigued and I want to finish the workout with like a super exaggerated range of motion, let's say with dips. Yeah. I like the assisted machine because I could go super deep and just really focus on the stretch without worrying too much about, you know, if if I can't stabilize myself too well with my body weight. Um, and then with pull-ups, I'll mess with like super wide grips, which I normally wouldn't do uh, pull-ups with really, really, really wide grips with my body weight because that can mess with my shoulder. But if I use assisted, uh, you mm-hmm. know, assistance, then I can do it and I can hit a different angle. Well, yeah, because a lot of times it's really just that you're not familiar with those ranges of motion. Yeah. And it's, so that's why it's 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 difficult to recruit muscles uh, when you're in that 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 stretch position, that in range position. Um, and so to have that bit of resistant help to get you to at least go through that full range and to to acclimate towards um, familiarizing yourself with those movements first. I think that's. That's very helpful. Uh, and then slow it down and then also make sure you're really tensing up uh, and getting connection to yeah. your muscles while you're doing that. And don't just do it passively because you have resistance now kind of taking over. 
Next question is from Johnny John John eighty eight. Mm. Which is better for perfecting a pull up, bands or an assisted pull up machine? Oh, okay, well it's connected it's, to the first one. I was going to say it's like the same. <laughs> question. Like the same question. Well, what's better for perfecting a pull up? Assisted pull up machines are, are actually really really good at doing it because they're pretty easy to use. They're actually quite simple to use. Bands are good too. The challenge with the bands is uh, when people step on them, sometimes they'll move their foot, you know, forward or back, and the band will come up and yeah. snap them in the crotch or come off the, the top there's, of the foot. There's actually a few ways you can do it. I mean, you can even take, like, if a squat rack, you could take it and put um, – the J hooks, you could put it over the J hooks. I like that. That's it, my favorite. It's, way. it's just less clunky for somebody who's maybe not as coordinated. And uh, like I've had clients, it's it's challenging to to have them either step all the way down or put their knee in because they're kind of all over the place. Yep. So that's you know a good alternative. So to explain I, that like in more detail, literally you're in a squat rack and the hooks that are in the rack, you tie a really strong band around them. So it's just going from one side to the other. And then it's really easy to step on top of. And you can raise those mm -hmm. hooks up or down now I'll tell you to give you, yeah, more or less resistance. That's the, in my opinion, the easiest, most stable, best way to use bands uh, for assistance. Yeah, I'd that. say the reason why the pull-up machine or the Gravitron machine, whatever you want to call it, is is better is it's, it's just easier it's to get in and do. And yeah. it's also easier to like change like typically people have four or five bands yeah. and they're like a certain strength more consistent with that resistance yeah where it's like i could go like oh this week i i, I was giving myself 60 pound assistance yeah. and yeah. then i'm gonna go to 55 i mean you could literally move it by like five or ten pound increments which really helps when you're trying to progress in that i will say this just yeah. to add something else to this question um for people who can do pull-ups one of my favorite things to do to progress with pull-ups. So say you can already do six pull-ups or seven pull-ups and you want to start training with resistance. Now you can attach weight around your waist. They have chains and belts that do this, but I like bands the most. If you tie a band around your waist and you put it so that it kind of goes down between your legs and you hook it around a dumbbell that's uh, heavy enough to where you won't move the dumbbell if you pull yourself up against this dumbbell and do pull-ups with banded resistance, it's so smooth. It feels so good. Um, and the, I progress so quickly when I use band resistance, just like when I would do band, uh, resistance on my squats or my bench press, I've done this with dips. I've done this with pull-ups and it's, it's my favorite way to do added resistance when I do those exercises. You know, it works really well too, is lose 20 pounds. <laughs> I did, dude, that I helps. did, I did, I did, pull did you pull up? Up Oh my God. It was just like, I've drank the weight. Oh ratio. man. Like, to me, that was like, what off. a huge difference when you, when you drop some weight like that. Yeah. Cause I've, I'm pretty consistent with dips and pull-ups always being in my routine. Yeah. So no matter what weight I am or how I'm training, it's always a part of my routine. And so I, I I'm like consistently know, Oh, this is difficult. This is how many are difficult for me right now. And I, I, because of, you know, the trisepatide and, and doing all that, I have been very infrequently training and definitely when I'm training out very hard, finally starting to get uh, better workouts and did dips and I was like, oh, and pull-ups and I was like, oh my God, this is feels so easy. And it's just because I'm 20 pounds lighter than what I was I before. tricked myself once doing that. I was, I was cutting and I went to go do pull-ups and I'm like, I got stronger. And I'm like, oh yeah, I lost weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Roo's Rooftop Training. How would you train a client that is coming back from vacation? Would you start slow and get back to where you ended before they took off? I always, so it depends on how long they were gone, of course, but typical vacation, 10 days, two weeks or whatever. I always do a week of easy workouts before I put them, start to adjust and kind of bring them back to where they were before. And I do this for a couple of different reasons. One, soreness uh, if you're ever going to get really sore from a workout you've done before, it's always when you take a week off or something like that. You go back, you do it again. It's like, oh my God, I got so sore. And you don't need, you don't need to do a ton to bounce back to yeah. where you were before. I mean, first it's off- It's not beneficial to go more. No, 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 no. In yeah. fact, strength takes a long time to go away. It's, this is one of the amazing things about strength training is you get a certain strength, you take a month off, so long as you weren't sick or you know eating super little, you go back to the gym, you probably lost no strength. So when you come back, you're as strong as you were before, but your muscle damage uh, occurs eat faster and easier. The resilience goes down a little bit. So I always, with every client, whenever they would come back, the first two or three workouts were always just easy. And listen, then we go back. Listen, in this situation where they haven't trained for at least a week or two, 
you uh, could easily overdo it. It's almost impossible to underdo it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they haven't been doing anything. So them doing a couple exercises yep, yep. or really light intensity is going to be a move them positively in the right direction because they hadn't done anything. So you're, you're way more likely to overreach and do too much when they're getting totally. back to that decision. You can't possibly do too little so long as you're doing something right because they weren't doing anything. So, and I, and by the way, I'm giving that advice, but I also have made that mistake so many times. Yeah. Like, so, so to give like, to be a little more specific, this is what it would look like. Client leaves for vacation. They come back. My goal in the workout is to have them move through a, a full range of motion with the exercises that we were doing before but the intensity is moderate at most. Yep. So I'm not stopping two reps short of failure. It's more like eight reps short of failure. Or, just what, or loading it half is what you would exactly. normally Exactly. It's just move through, get full range of motion, feel good. And then they then the second week back, we'd get back to where, how they were doing before, and it was great. It always worked out great. Yeah. Next question is from James Ayers. What workout routine would you recommend for my mom who is in her mid sixties? She has very little gym experience. Maps Map starter. starter. Map starter. Maps mm -hmm. starter. So for people don't know what that program is, we designed Map Starter for the total beginner, the total beginner to strength training who's never done strength training exercises, but also subcategories of people like advanced age, uh, postpartum pregnancy, very obese, you know, really obese people who came out of, uh, you know, they just finished rehab. They got cleared by their physical therapist, doctor to start exercising again. So what makes that workout so appropriate? Uh, well, of course the volume isn't super high, but we use the stability ball quite a bit in map starter and the stability ball. Now there was a point in the fitness space. Uh, I don't know what it was, maybe almost 20 years ago where the stability ball entered into the fray and then it just got out, it went crazy. It's, it's like everything was stability. They, they went too far. And then people, uh, you know, went the opposite direction. Stability ball is worthless. It is it is not worthless. It's a tool. If you use it appropriately, it's extremely valuable. And one of the best things about a stability ball is that when you're learning, when you're just getting into strength training, it encourages good posture, muscle engagement, balance, and stability. So if I get a brand new person and we're going to do an overhead shoulder press. And I put them in a bench that's literally, you know, a seat and then the, you know, the back. And they have to keep their back up against it. They're, they're, they're going to offset the stability and the balance to the bench. When I want them to learn how to do that on their own, having them sit on a ball right. encourages that engagement, encourages good form. And then when they press, they can't just lean back on the bench and, and get bad form if they do, they'll fall off the ball. So you obviously go lighter, you go slower. It's a great, it is a very fast, great way to go from beginner to now we can move into in a safe way, an effective way, traditional strength. The training. biggest yeah, concern in the, in the beginning is learning how to brace properly and connect to your core and to be able to anchor yourself yeah. like, like you're mentioning uh, in any movement. And so it's like you, you have to be uh, – sort of tethered to uh, you, the position where it's like if any sort of uh, momentum's carrying you laterally, ro causing you to rotate, you can adjust and bring yourself back uh, uh, to, to proper posture and be able to kind of tighten your up so so you're immovable when you need to be immovable. You know, the stability ball reminds me of my <clears throat> split stance trick that I always do with my clients. We're always looking for hacks or little ways to, to get your clients to be in better posture when doing any sort of a movement. And when you put them in an unstable environment, like sit, sit, sitting on a ball or lying on a ball, it forces you to get into better posture because- Or you'll it, fall. Yeah, or you'll roll, you'll roll off of it. Yeah. Same thing with the whole split stance when you do curls and presses and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I know that's not optimal for pressing the most amount of weight, but I'm not there that with that the point. Yeah, it's not the point. At this point, I'm trying to get my client- to stabilize, to engage their core, to have good posture. And one of the best ways I've found of getting them to do that without constantly just communicating it is put them in an unstable environment, split stances or the stability ball. And for someone who's just getting started, who's deconditioned, advanced age, really, really overweight, this is a really, people really People really forget, program. a lot of people, we've talked about this a lot, but people forget that strength training, when you break it down, is uh, there are techniques, their skills, their movements that require skill. And the better you perform the movement, the better, the, the more positive benefits you're going to get from that movement. The worse you do that movement or the, if your skill isn't great with that movement, then you don't get the same benefits and the, the detriments, the negatives start to skyrocket. And the reason why I'm making this, uh, saying this is 
we often, or the average person often, and sometimes people in the fitness industry, often communicate or understand strength training exercises as that's shoulders, that's legs, that's back. What we're trying to do is work this muscle. But what we forget is it's if the exercise is performed with great skill, then we are working the body and the muscles in the proper way. Without good skill, without good technique, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. Pick whatever exercise you want then. Like what's that old meme? You know, any... <laughs> any strength training exercise is a back exercise if you yeah, do it wrong yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, lower back exercise. Yeah, lower back exercise if you do it wrong enough. Yeah, so yeah. they're all skills. And so Truth. when you get into strength training, even as you pursue strength training, at the top of the list of priorities is perfecting the skills of these exercises. In fact, if, if, if we took a group of people and we compared them to another group and we followed them for 10 years and one group was encouraged to practice the skill, perfect the technique. The other group was like, work your shoulders, work your legs, work your chest. The group that just practiced that technique would get far better results, far less injuries. They would get way less plateaus than the group that was looking at hitting muscles, feeling at muscles, trying to burn, trying to whatever. So by the way, speaking of technique, we have a guide. We have a free guide called How to Squat Like a Pro. Literally the guide, the entire guide teaches you how to perfect your squat and get the most out of it. And we've made it free. It is a free guide. It costs you nothing. It's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is at mindpumpadam. <laughs>